again and welcome back. Now these next few talks are all going to be about arranging. That can either be arranging from your own sketches into something that's a finished composition, or taking a piece of piano music, or taking a song or just a melody. The rules of this game are always the same. The first thing is we have to realize that there are four essential strands to what you're about to do. And if one of them is missing, the first thing is to create that strand that's missing. Now, what I mean by this is, if, for example, you just have a melody, we've already heard this. This is this German carol, Maria Duachendorn. Now, there's a lot to be said for just leaving the melody just on its own, literally just like that. So that anything we do add to it, we must be careful that we just don't gild the lily, as we say. But of course, the first thing to do would be very simple harmony. Now, I'm going to keep this harmony very, very straightforward. I'm just going to use one, four and five. And then, as we're in a minor key, well, I may well allow myself to modulate to the relative major. So now we have two strands. We have a melody and its accompanying harmony. Obviously the accompanying harmony just on its own is rather dull, but it's the basis from which we can now add more strands. Now without changing the harmony, I can make this a little more interesting just by breaking the chords in the accompaniment. So I've already brought in a new dimension by using figuration in the accompaniment. The next thing to be consistent about now is this bass line. What am I doing with the bass line? How interesting can it be? And this is the most essential thing. So that when we have our four strands, we'll have the melody, the rhythmic accompaniment. That's just given by this, um, this figuration that I was playing now. But that could be something different if we're arranging that for a group of musicians. Then we need some accompaniment with the chords, and we need the bass line. And of those, the bass line is by far the most important uh, because it will, make, it will determine the character of what you're doing. Now the next thing I'm going to do is think about arranging for, say, four instruments. This is a very standard arrangement in pop bands today, and I'm sure it was, it's been standard as long as people have been playing in C major. And the, um, the, the idea is you have one person playing the melody, that can be a violin, it can be a flute, saxophone, or it can be a singer, of course. And then you have somebody else playing accompanying harmony. Pianos are wonderful for this. Guitars are wonderful for this. Harps are wonderful for this. They, by their very nature, are very good at playing chords and they can fill in harmony very well. And then you really want somebody playing the bass line. If you have nobody playing the bass line, this, that, this accompaniment that's coming from the piano will already be the bass line. And it may be slightly dull. I mean, this is exquisitely dull. Mabel decide actually it's better off just having the melody just on its own. But if you're going to have a bass line, well see if you can make it a little more interesting and make, let it contribute something to the whole thing. And then of course if we have a drums or somebody who can or contribute something, a tambourine, a bell, something that can just uh, give uh, the occasional highlight and maybe set something in the accompaniment that will bring a new dimension to the whole thing. So these are our four elements once again.
Melody, rhythm. Harmony, well, I think you may have heard of those, but then the one that comes to it is the bass line, and we shouldn't underestimate that, as I say, it'll make a tremendous contribution. Now, what I've done now is a little version for a medieval band, as it were. Now, of course, um, the sort of music notation that we have these days isn't even as old as the Middle Ages. And so, of course, it's completely ridiculous to suggest that something like this could have ever been written. But something like this might have been improvised if a group of musicians, say, with a recorder, drum, a harp, and some bass instrument, if they were going to play this Christmas carol, um, the, uh, this might be the, sort of th the way they might be approaching it. Thank you for joining me. The next talks will be looking at Renaissance ensembles, Baroque orchestras, Romantic and Classical orchestras, and we'll be seeing how, the, as the orchestra grows, how we add new elements and we have more opportunities for bringing more and more colour to our simple melodies. That's all for now.